I'm Debbie Marcantonio with eXp Realty, and today I'm going to give you a roadmap on what it takes to sell your home on your own. I'm going to show you exactly what I do so that you can have the confidence to do it yourself. Okay, let's start with staging. Your home needs to be in showable condition. Sometimes it's only a matter of small cosmetic items that can improve the quality of the photos to increase the amount of showings. Staging your home is more than just clearing out the clutter, which obviously is needed. Staging will present the home in its optimal condition. Removing a couple pieces of furniture or repositioning them can open up a room to look much larger. Trust me, buyers want spacious rooms. You'll also want to neutralize your home to reflect subtle, warm tones. It helps buyers visualize themselves in your home. I know it's so hard to be objective when you've been living in the home for so long. Let's talk about repairs. It's a great idea to repair defects. Why? Well, when a buyer walks through your home and sees items that need attention, they will automatically assume the worst and that it will cost a small fortune to repair. If they even submit an offer, it is probably going to be much lower because they are overestimating repair costs. So not only might you get a lowball offer, but then the inspector comes in and can mark an item as an inspection item, creating even greater fear and leverage for the buyers. Professional photos. These are so important in getting buyers in the door. That's why I personally never take cell phone pictures. I only hire professionals. It makes such a difference. Great photos gets buyers falling in love with your home before they even see it. The right angle and lighting is so important. If you need a list of how to prepare your home for a photographer, just email me and I'll be happy to send it over. Pricing. I know this may seem obvious, but homes, homes that are priced even slightly above market value will sit, even in today's crazy market. So how do you price it right? You'll need to pull recently sold homes and compare it to the features, style, and size of your home and lot. It's an art and a science. Buyers are very, very sophisticated today and they know immediately if a home is overpriced. If your home is on the market too long, they will assume you're desperate and may try to lowball you. Make sure you're taking market trends into account. Marketing, my favorite. <laughs> Since your home isn't going to be on the MLS where a vast majority of buyers find their home, you'll want to try and market to them directly. What I recommend is locating people that are renting in the area. You can then go to an online print company. I happen to like vistaprint.com, they're pretty good. And then send out mailers such as postcards to renters in the area. If they aren't in the market, well, maybe they know someone who is. Facebook targeting ads are also another really good way to target buyers. So let's evaluate some offers. <laughs> An offer is a starting point. Try not to be insulted if you do get a lowball offer. Some buyers just try to test the waters and always, always, always be professional. Respond to all offers with a counter. You never know how high a buyer's final offer will be. I've personally negotiated many high-level real estate transactions, and I know a poor negotiator can leave a lot of money on the table. Now, before you accept an offer, you'll need to evaluate if the deal will actually close. The highest offer isn't always the strongest offer. How do you increase the probability of the deal closing? Well, you'll need a strong buyer. What does that mean? So when you start to receive offers, what I always do and recommend is to vet the lender. Is the lender giving you a pre-qualification or a pre-approval? There's a huge difference between the two. Anybody can get a pre-qualification. I mean, I can go online to a bank's website, punch in a few numbers and print out a pre-qual. You'll want to reach out to the lender and speak with them and ensure that the buyer has actually submitted 
all of the required documentation for a loan approval, such as W-2s, bank statements, was there a credit report pulled, employment verification, proof of funds for the down payment, etc. After you've accepted an offer, here's where the real work comes in. There's going to be a three-day attorney review period. I have to express how important it is to have an excellent real estate attorney who knows what they are doing. Believe it or not, some of them don't, and it can cost you the deal. Once the attorney review period is over, the buyers will need to schedule an inspection as soon as possible. The inspector will inspect your home in great detail and will most likely find issues that you didn't even know existed. It happens all the time. The inspector will send a detailed report to the buyers. I've seen reports anywhere from 20 to 60 pages long. This report will be used to further negotiate the price down. This is where being a good negotiator has an advantage. At this time, it's a good idea to apply for your certificate of occupancy. Building codes, fire codes, and ordinances can change frequently, and every town is so different. During busy times, there could be a delay, so check with your town and plan early. You'll need to know how to get your home up to code and what is needed to be done to get your certificate of occupancy, which is necessary for title to transfer. If you've had any work done to your home, you'll want to make sure that all of your permits have been closed. Be proactive and avoid delays in closing. At some point, the buyer's lender will order an appraisal. An appraiser will visit their property to evaluate the inside and outside of the home. This is not the time to have your home in disarray. You'll want to make sure it's kept presentable because the appraiser will be taking pictures of your home in order to help determine its value. Finally, the buyer's underwriting and title search should be in process or completed and you should receive a commitment letter from the buyer's lender. Now, don't be shy, call the buyer or their lender to request this commitment letter. This will pretty much guarantee that all conditions have been met. And I have to tell you, any excuses on why a commitment letter isn't being issued could be a red flag. So be vigilant and don't be afraid to push hard on this. Congratulations, you should be able to proceed to closing. Once final employ employment verification has been completed by the lender, the buyers will be clear to close. My favorite words, I love hearing that. <laughs> now you'll want to schedule a final walkthrough, either the day of closing or the day before. Make sure everything is out of the house and nothing was damaged during the moving process. If you have any questions about the process, feel free to reach out to me or if all of this seems overwhelming and you would like help selling your home, it would be a pleasure to assist you. I'm Debbie Marcantonio from eXp Realty. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have an amazing day.